Joining me now from Leeds is the Shadow Justice Secretary, Richard Bergen. Welcome to the Sunday morning, Politics, Joe. Richard. I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Very well, thanks. Now, this weekend, you've announced a 1,000 more security and intelligence agency staff. That, of course, is in line with what the government's already announced. And the Shadow Home Secretary, Diane Abbott, has said today you won't be spending any more money. So it doesn't amount to very much, does it? Well, that's just uh, one of the parts of our uh, pledge card on uh, safer communities. There's also... Uh, 10,000 extra police because remember the Conservative oh. government has cut the police by 20,000 and our 10,000 extra police would mean an extra police officer in each neighbourhood. There's also 3,000 extra prison officers in our pledge because the prison staff has been cut uh, by 6,000, that's the third since 2010 by the government that's not helping keep communities safe. Also we're pledging 3,000 extra firefighters also, the 1,000 extra security staff, as you mentioned, but also uh, 500 extra border guards as well, because uh, there have been uh, 13 instances or 13 areas identified um, where um, right. and our that's borders are as secure and as they should absolutely. be. Absolutely, and that's the list of numbers that you've given me to cover all those broad areas. But if we concentrate on the security services, because it was Jeremy Corbyn who said there will be more police on the streets under a Labour government, and if the security services need more resources to keep track of those who wish to murder and maim, then they should get Get them. So why aren't you giving them more resources? Well, we're uh, committing to a thousand. Yes, but the uh, government, the government's staff. doing that too. If you were going to do something over and above that and actually commit more money, you're not doing so. Well, the government hasn't yet uh, uh, delivered uh, on the, that promise. Uh, we will deliver on that uh, promise. But, what but with no made, more money, just what, to be clear. What Jeremy's made very clear is that you can't do security on the cheap. Austerity has to stop at the police station mm. uh, door. Austerity has to stop at the hospital door as well. But uh, we will be giving the resources required to keep our communities safe. So you'll give them the resources, Richard Bergen, um, the security services and the police, as you say, um, and more powers? Well, the police uh, need to be empowered, but when you listen to what the Police Federation are saying, they've been speaking out for a long time about the danger uh, caused uh, by police cuts. And I'm talking uh, not only about terrorism, not only about acts of extreme violence, but also anything from uh, anti-social behaviour sure. to burglary to Can violent Can I just crime. pick up on what you said at the beginning? You said more powers. What sort of powers are you thinking of giving the security services? Well, we need to listen to the security services. Well, we that's not a power, is it? To, well, we need to listen to the security services, to the intelligence community mm. uh, and to the uh, armed forces uh, and to the police federation and to the police about how they think uh, that uh, our communities can be made safe. But one thing's clear. Cutting the number of police by 20,000 makes our communities less safe, not more safe. Four. Sure. Now, you said you're going to listen to the security services. Can voters be reassured and guaranteed that Jeremy Corbyn will listen to the security services and the police in terms of more powers, if that's what they want? Because well, up till now, Jeremy Corbyn has spent his whole political career voting against measures designed to tackle homegrown and international terrorism. Well, I think Jeremy Corbyn's speech uh, on uh, safer communities mm. uh, earlier this uh, week made clear he is listening to the security services. So he would grant those new powers for... because he voted against the Terrorism Act in 2000, the Terrorism Act in 2006, in 2011 the introduction of terrorism prevention and investigation measures, and in 2014 the Data Retention and Investigatory Powers Act. So which new powers will he be happy to enact? Just to say, uh, Jeremy Corbyn, along with Theresa May, David Davis and many Conservative MPs voted against legislation where they thought it would be ill-advised, ineffective or actually counterproductive. It's a very complex mm. situation. What we don't want to do uh, is introduce hastily prepared laws with one eye to the newspaper headline, which can actually act as recruiting sergeants sure. for terrorism. And actually, when I said earlier that Jeremy Corbyn made clear in his speech earlier this week that he's been listening to the uh, security community, it's clear because what he said about the international situation has also been said by the ex-head uh, of uh, the MI5, uh, Stella Remington and her predecessor as well, and as well as President uh, Barack Obama, sure. by the way. So can we look at the powers that you might want to introduce? You say you will give uh, the police and the security services the resources and the powers they need. If we look back at some of the legislation that Jeremy Corbyn and others voted against, in 2000, for example, it gave the Secretary of State the power to prescribe terrorist organisations and made it illegal to finance terrorist organisations. 
Does Jeremy Corbyn still think that would be a bad idea? He wouldn't vote in favour of those sorts of measures? Well, Jeremy Corbyn, as I say, along with Theresa May, David no, sure. Davis and I know others... you want to try and bracket it with no, Conservatives no, who've done the same, but I'm interested in what Jeremy Corbyn's going to do when let, he let says me... we're going to be smarter, we're going to be smarter about fighting terrorism. If he's not prepared to vote in favour of those sorts of measures or others which outlawed the glorification of terrorism or trying to impose restrictions on suspects, I'm just trying to find out, and people want to know, what is he going to do? It's, it's a complex uh, situation. With this legislation, as you'll know, the devil is often in the detail. If it were as simple that you could stop terrorism by voting a piece of legislation through Parliament, then terrorism would have been stopped a long, long time ago. Sadly, there are no easy answers, and that's not just recognised by Jeremy Corbyn. It's recognised by uh, Barack Obama, by Stella Remington, who is the head of the MI5, by David Davis, and by other Conservative MPs. What is clear, as Jeremy made clear in his speech earlier this week, is the way things are being uh, done currently isn't working, but we've got to be tough on terrorism, tough on the unforgivable acts of murder that are carried out, but also tough on the causes of terrorism as well. But the sad truth is there are no easy answers. If there were easy answers, then the problem would have been solved a long time ago. Sure, but I think voters might want to ask the question that if you want to employ more security and intelligence officers, but your leader is still uncomfortable with giving them the powers that they need to do their job, because as you say, it's complicated legislation. They'll want to know how you're going to do it. I mean, let me just give you this example, which is a recent one. At another Stop the war rally in 2014, Jeremy Corbyn said that the murder of UK aid worker Alan Henning by ISIS was the price of war, the price of intervention, the price of jingoism. So, according to Jeremy Corbyn, the beheading of a charity worker is to be blamed on UK foreign policy. Well, uh, at the beginning of that speech by Jeremy Corbyn, he mentioned the importance of the one minute silence for the uh, memory of Alan Henning, who was so uh, cruelly and un unforgivably murdered. What Jeremy Corbyn's also made clear is that responsibility for acts of terrorism and murder lies uh, with the murderer. And something that's really disappointed me is that the Prime Minister, Theresa May, at an international conference the other day, said that in Jeremy Corbyn's speech on this issue on Monday, he said that Britain was to blame for the uh, heinous, unforgivable act of murder on Monday night. She knows he didn't say that. She's a very intelligent person. Whether she agrees with him or not on his politics, she knows he didn't say that in his speech, which was widely accepted even by his opponents. But what troubles me is we've got a Prime Minister who must have sat down with her advisers early that day and said, well, I know he didn't say that, but if we say he did, then guess what, we might win some votes. I I think that's shameful. I think that shows that Theresa May can't be trusted. These issues should transcend party politics. We do need to pull together on this issue. Richard Bergen, thank you very much.